Hi, welcome to PKS classes. I am Pratap. Today we will study sodium channels. How drugs bind to sodium channels and show their action. We will discuss. Sodium channels can be three types. Leakage channels which are always open present on the cell membrane and the receptor operated or ligand gated channels and a ligand binds and the ion channel opens and third one is the voltage gated channels so today first leakage channels already we have discussed this thing uh, in our earlier classes leakage channels are always open and they are there to maintain the resting membrane potential and then receptor operated or we can say ligand gated for example nicotinic receptor We have two types of nicotinic receptor, nicotinic muscular and nicotinic neuronal. It is nicotinic muscular present in skeletal muscle. Ganglion. So acetylcholine acting on the nicotinic receptor causes if NM then skeletal muscle contraction. Okay, so a blocker will cause skeletal muscle relaxation and if it is ganglion then ganglion stimulant this is an N and N and this is a ligand gated and uh, here You can say um, this is a link to cation channel, and here a still column binds, and this causes depolarization and it excludes effects. So acetylcholine bind is the ligand which binds with the receptor and this ion channel opens and shows it action. And the third one is the voltage gated. And voltage gated means it depends on the membrane potential. Membrane potential change will lead to change in the conformation of the ion channel whether it opens or closes. And in sodium, we have three functional states and they are open, closed and refractory. Three states are there and <coughs> one sodium channel only when opens when it is in closed state, not in refractory state. So let us uh, draw a diagram. So sodium channel, as we know, sodium is present in the ratio of suppose cell membrane outside, inside. So sodium is present in the ratio of 142 is to 10. So sodium always enters inside from outside. So this channel, you can show two gates here. So this is outside gate, inside gate, both are open. So this is the open state. And once it opens, then, then for some period it becomes refractory or inactive, no further action. This is inactive state, inactive or refractory state. And then This is called closed state. 
क्लोज्ड और रेस्टिंग स्टेट सो व्हेन अ सेल इज रेस्टिंग इन रेस्टिंग कंडीशन दिस दिस इज दिस दिस इज द स्टेट ऑफ द सोडियम चैनल आफ्टर दिस स्टेट ओनली एनी स्टिमुली और इंपल्स और एक्शन पोटेंशियल एक्शन पोटेंशियल कैन ओपन द सोडियम चैनल टू कॉज डीपोलराइजेशन आफ्टर दैट फॉर अ सर्टन पीरियड इट बिकम्स इनएक्टिव एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस इनएक्टिव स्टेट इफ यू प्रोवाइड एनी एक्शन पोटेंशियल और स्टिमुली देर विल नो एक्शन ओके एंड once it reaches the closed state then another stimuli can initiate the action so this is a cycle open inactive resting state and many drugs act on sodium channels the drugs like anti epileptic drugs like your phenytoin uh, valproic acid they act on sodium channels then anti arrhythmic drugs then your local anesthetics all of them are sodium channel blockers let us uh, give one example of anti epileptic drugs as you know epilepsy is nothing but high frequency discharges by a group of neurons in the brain so there is hyper excitability and hyper synchrony so a group of neurons are excited and why they are excited suppose this is the condition of the sodium channels as you know sodium sodium channels mean sodium is responsible for impulse conduction and if there are impulse then you see if this is uh, uh, once it opens then it is inactive or refractory then it becomes closed and then another impulse can open it and likewise this happens and if for some reason this state is diminished or decreased then what happens quickly this cycle is repeated and quickly if the cycle is repeated that means in unit time number of impulse discharge will be more so that that leads to high frequency discharges so here if this period is less suppose say for example this exists for 0.2 second for example only and this for 0.2 seconds and this for 0.1 second and then again so total 0.5 seconds suppose and for some reason is this becomes 0.01 second then what will happen quickly uh, this uh, so channel from this state it will come back to this closed state and another stimuli will again open again impulse discharge so this leads to impulse discharge and this causes high frequency discharges and leads to seizures and epilepsy occurs so if we can block this state selectively then what will happen this state will be delayed and the drug should delay this state until its normal period it should not go beyond the specific period for, for example in this case 0.2 second so it should be 0.01 second it should, it should increase this one not more than this less than this so what will happen normal neurons should not be affected okay normal neurons should not be affected and only those neurons should be affected which have high frequency that means the Uh, neurons of a, an epileptic patient so all the anti epileptic drugs they bind to this state only they bind to this state and so their blocking is called use dependent and frequency dependent use are state dependent that means it selectively binds to the inactive state and frequency dependent normal neurons are not affected only 
those neurons which have high frequency they are affected the state is delayed and the total cycle is uh, normalized in this way this acts so in detail when we will study anti arrhythmic drugs local entities separately we will discuss what is the mechanism thank you